Welcome back to the Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium, the venue for the 27th staging of the World Championships. First time the World Badminton Championships have been staged in Japan. Third day of play, and that's what's happened so far. And we have two more matches to come. Next up is Mixed Doubles, and it features the married couple of Terry He and Jessica Tan up against the number 12 seeds at Kanako and Matsutomo. Well, this match is from the top half of the draw, but as you can see, to beg your pardon, it's the bottom half of the draw. What earth am I talking about? Because the number two seeds and defending champions, Puavara Nukro and Teira Tanachai, are safely through to the third round. So, too, are the European champions, Landsfuss and Lohau of Germany. So, the number 12 seeds from Japan, Yuki. Kaneko and Mizaki Matsutomo up against the Singapore pairing pair who have just won gold at the Commonwealth Games. So here come the Commonwealth Games gold medalists leading them out. Terry He and Jessica Tan. And as far as the Japanese pair are concerned, well, perhaps their biggest result so far was reaching the final of the All England Championships last year. Lost out to Watanabe and Higashino. Now, this will be a first meeting between these two pairs, never met before. Toss of the coin by our umpire. Umpire for this one. Balabuna Cien of India. And one of the reasons that they've never played against each other before is that Terry He took time out. In 2019, he enlisted to do his national service. And then, of course, we had the pandemic after he'd done his year in the army. We had the global pandemic. So it's their first world championships as a pair. There is Terry He, 27 years of age, turned 27 last month. Born in Singapore, but both his parents born in Penang in Malaysia. And they have been as high as 15 in the world ranking because they used to play together and uh, then went their separate ways. And Jessica Tan, who turned 29 last month, formed a, a very good partnership with Danny Chris Nanta, with whom she played the World Championships in Basel in 2019 got married these two players from Singapore on the 2nd of October last year but she certainly had her injury problems as uh, Jessica Tan she's had knee surgery she's had a shoulder problem not helped by a motorbike accident now in the first round they had a walkover because poor old Callum Hemming and Jess Pugh from England couldn't make the trip here to Tokyo because at least one of them tested positive for COVID. And the rules here in Japan do not allow anybody who's not had a negative test into the country. So to the left hand and right handed combination, Yuki Kanako, the left hander. Another one who's had a, a recent birthday, a birthday last month, turned 28. And 179, that's about 5 foot 10. They're playing off their career high ranking of 16 
23rd consecutive week at 16 in the world ranking. Misaki Matsutomo is 30 years of age now. Now she's won a world championship medal. That was in the women's doubles with Ayaka Takahashi, a bronze medal in Glasgow in 2017. She, of course, is best known as the Olympic champion uh, with Ayaka Takahashi. And they had a bye in the first round here by virtue of their seeded position. Now, here's a fun fact in case you didn't know. Mizaki Matsutomo's former women's doubles partner, Ayaka Takahashi, is married to Yuki Kanako, her mixed doubles partner. So, as I was telling you, our umpire, ballerina Sien of India, and our service judge, Wahiana from Indonesia. So we're just about ready for the player introductions from the umpire. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Hi Yong Kai Terry and Tan Wei Han Jessica, Singapore. And on my left, Yuki Kaneko and Misaki Matsutomo, Japan. Misaki Matsutomo to serve to He Yong Kai Terry. Love all. Play. So the number 12 seeds, Yuki Kanako and Zaki Matsutomo of Japan getting this mixed double second round match underway against Terry He and Jessica Tan, the Commonwealth Games gold medalist from Singapore. Well, delighted to say that joining me in the commentary position is Jenny Moore, also from Babington Insight. And what partner love. on court and off with Greg, who we had for the last match, the men's doubles. And Jenny, very sorry that you lost your mixed doubles earlier, but delighted that it means that you can be here with us uh, this evening. Now, mixed doubles is, I think, one of the most, or is the most complex of all five disciplines tactically. Would you agree with that? Yeah, there's so many different tactics that can be de deployed throughout different types of matches. So I think this will be a, a very exciting game that we've got here. Even though the, the Japanese pair are the seeded pair, as you said in the introductions, the Singapore pair have just come off from winning the Commonwealth Games and they had a great run. They didn't drop a single set throughout the whole tournament. So I'm sure they'll be full of confidence and looking to capitalise on that confidence throughout this tournament. Yeah. And I'm excited to see what they can do. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to go long of the back line. Now, I was... I've seen Terry He for, for many years before he, he took his break and, and did his national service. And I very much think that he's... Uh, a wonderful player technically he comes out with the most extraordinary shots like that so the issue is going to be as we look at the Singapore coach of Olympic Shia or Mal Malaysian player how do you as a pair if you're playing against a combination that has a player like Terry he who seems to be able to hit any shot from anywhere how do you neutralize that I think if I, if I was going to play somebody like he and Tam, I think you have to try and get he below the tape, below the height of the net, and force him, Three, because when he's above the height four. of the net, he's very creative, and he can, as you said, he can play almost any shot he, he likes, which makes it really difficult for any of his opponents. Whereas if he's below the tape, then he's much more limited in what he can play. So I think that's going to be a key tactic there. Five, three. But something we did see throughout the, the Commonwealth Games was that if if, ta if uh, he sorry becomes a bit too over-creative, that's sometimes where 
but unforced errors start creeping in, so I think that's something he's going to have to keep an eye out on throughout this match. Four, five. Oh, confusion. And say when we're watching mixed doubles that the woman's role is absolutely crucial in this discipline because you know there's no getting away from it uh, biologically men are stronger than women so you want the men at the back of the court using their physical strengths this is a good rally oh that may have been going wide this is a brilliant rally. It's gone wide. Fabulous badminton. But going back to the point I was going to make, you want the man at the back of the court using his physical strength to uh, thunder down smashes. And women tend to be uh, more flexible and therefore able to a twist and turn a quicker at front of the court so you want them in their favored position as well so i think that whoever can control the front of the court to maybe set it up for the man to play the big smash that's a big part of big doubles isn't it yeah exactly right and i think it actually also works both ways in that the, the male player, he also has to play shots to help set up his female partner as well. It's not just about the woman playing shots to set up the man. It, it does work both ways. I couldn't agree more. In fact, defences are so good nowadays that I think an awful lot of rallies have to be won from the front of the court. placement of the smash. He set that up very well with that Eight, slow drop five. to the middle. Created a bit of confusion, that one there. And then great placement into the hip of Matsutomo. Oh, good return oh. observe. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. <laughs> Lovely. From Matsutomo. Another shot with great placement. Kaneko didn't really know what which side to look for. And unfortunately, he chose the wrong side, I think, in the end. Oh, he read that. Oh. My goodness me, Terry, he was on top of the net Six. there. Interval. Waiting for that shot. Not only waiting for it, he played a brilliant cross court. Oh to force the error. And it's a five-point advantage. six after seven minutes. Look at that. That's delightful, isn't it? I have to ask you, Joe, because we've got a married couple on the court. You're playing with with a life partner on court. Is it difficult? Does it help? Or is it a, a help? Of course, you've got to say it, it's a help. But, you know, tell us really. I would say there's definitely some benefits and some disadvantages. I yeah. think a huge benefit is that we're very, as I'm sure, any other married couples or couples who are together on the court, very comfortable with each other. So I'm happy to say absolutely anything to Greg. 
that maybe I wouldn't be comfortable saying to a, another partner. Um, but of course, when we're in the heat and in the heat of the battle out there, we know that we're in it for each other and we're yes. trying our hardest. But then there are some times where maybe you, because we are in the heat at the moment, we'll say things to each other oh, that, look at that. that we would maybe not say quite like that to another part, another partner. <laughs> yes. But it's all about communication. And, yes. and that's the same actually for if you're playing with a partner, if you're with them off the court or not. It, communication yeah. is such a huge part of the game. Well, another fabulous rally. Service over. Seven, eleven. Quick. Uh, I've always thought that it's been a very interesting career development for Mizaki Matsutomo uh, because she started playing mixed doubles with Kenichi Hayawakawa and in fact reached number 12 on the world rankings with him and Japan did that with the specific over. intention of making her 12, a better front court seven. player for her women's doubles. It's interesting, isn't it? And, and now she only, with the retirement of Ayaka Takahashi, she only plays mixed doubles. Yeah, I mean, she's a great all-round player. I've seen her in many matches in the past where she's not afraid to take the, the back of the court. I think mean, it's really great to see that she's comfortable hitting four, five, six shots from the rear court. She's not playing one or two and rushing forwards to the net. Kaneko is comfortable, looking threatening at the front of the court, and I think that's quite a good advantage for them. Absolutely. Um, you're spot on about being a good all-round player because, of course, she won a silver medal at the World Junior Championships back in 2010. Lost the final to a certain Ratchanuk Intanon. Yeah, somebody's using a flashlight. Over on the other side, I think. Please. Yeah, well, it's very distracting for the players. Oh. A great stop drop from Kaneko there. Very good disguise. Seven over. Nine. Cut in. of this rally. Oh, there it is again. That's the second time, isn't it, that he's yep. smashed down towards the forehand side of Yuki Kaneko. And he hasn't nine. been waiting for it. Yeah, he's waiting to cover his right hip as a left-handed player, and he's really not looking for that down the line at all. I think if he lifts that up that line again, he really should be looking for it because as he's had already two winners from that, and he's been looking for it from now. Yeah. yeah you've got to learn and start with your opponent is playing the winner against you. You've got to start looking for it. You're absolutely right. There, once again, he wasn't standing on the side of the court yeah. there, but they're aiming towards his forehand defence. And he seems to have a problem, Kanako, from switching from one to the other, from a backhand to forehand or forehand to backhand. Yeah, they're getting a lot of success with that so far. Whoa! And again, Whoa! exactly the same. 16, 10. Oh, this is a, been an excellent start to the match by the Commonwealth Games gold medalists. And I should think when everybody saw the draw, everybody was hoping to avoid Terry He and Jessica Tan. Very dangerous floaters. Yeah, that's a good shot.
Yeah, I think the Japanese pair need to start trying to get the attack a lot more. They've just lost four or five points quite quickly just from giving the lift away quite easily to Terry He. They really need to try and hustle for the, the net and to try and get the lift so Kaneko can play smash winners just like that. Yeah, it's giving away the lift again. Yeah, that was good defence, turning the defensive play into attack. Oh, look at that. Look at that! That's a great shot. It's ridiculously good. And he plays that. He seems to play that forehand drive with so little backswing of the racket. He's so relaxed as well. Even if they were somehow able to get that back, he's so relaxed he's able to quickly, I'm sure, turn the next one away into another space. Japanese combination doing exactly as Jenny suggested, getting themselves 17. on the attack. That's gone long at the back line. Well, on the points, 14, you can ride 17. that momentum. You know well yourself, Jenny, that, you know, sometimes it's, it's just one or two rallies and then you start having the belief again. There's only three points in it now. The belief yep. is back. Definitely. And another one, I think if I, think if I was he in town now, I'd maybe start to think, OK, well, they're giving the lift 15, away a lot more than they have been the last 17. two points. You can see them talking with each other now. They need to regroup, get their tactics back on, that they need to get the attack, and now they need to hustle for the net a bit more. They've given it away a bit too easily. It's going wide. Good commitment to the serve. Yeah. So a three-point advantage, and three points away from the opening game. of the last seven points in the Japanese combination. Yeah, we've just seen Terry He walk off and take a, a quick towel down. I'm sure trying to regroup and get ready for the next couple of points to come out strong. It's a good play. Oh, an even better return. Yeah, that was a big point. 19. 17. Oh. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that goes down as misjudgment or just an excellent length on the shot from the Japanese pair. I think she did mean to leave it. Yeah. But yeah, it was 18, a really good 19. shot from Matsutomo. Very good power, but also excellent judgment on her behalf. 
that she knew exactly how hard to hit it so that she wasn't making a mistake at such a critical point of the match. Good defence. Yeah, the crouch defence there from Izaki Natsutomo. And the number 12 seeds from Japan are back level. Well, who would have thought? And they were 11, 17 down. Extraordinary. Eight of 10 points. <laughs> Another good flick serve. I think the Japanese pair are using the width on the court really well now at the moment. A lot of their shots of the first half of the match were very central towards Jessica Tan and also Terry He as well down down the middle of the court. Whereas now they're finding the width and making Jessica Tan move, making her outstretch, which is going to give them easy kill like it just did. Yeah. Good analysis. Game point opportunity from the number 12 seeds. Oh, not the best of serves. But they convert coming from behind Yuki Kanako and Mizaki Matsutomo of Japan from 11 17 down. But they take the opening game 21 19 in 19 minutes. If <laughs> Japanese coaches, including Jeremy Gang, I should think were absolutely delighted by the way that opening game finished. Kanako and Matsudomo coming from behind. Uh, but if you weren't with us during the interval, I can tell you that Terry He was standing by his kit box looking absolutely infuriated with himself. And somehow he's got to put that opening game out of his mind. Oh dear. Well, that's a second service error. Easier said than done, though, Jenny, isn't it? I mean, you, you, all the psychologists, all the coaches, they all tell you, you know, forget the opening game, Jenny. I know you were in the lead, but you can't. You can't put it out of your mind. Yeah, he has to try his absolute best, though. He played, they both played some amazing badminton up to it was around 17 11 in that first set. And they almost kind of switched off a little bit. They stopped. One, they both stopped all. chasing forwards. They were kind of waiting for the shuttle to come to them. And I think that was the biggest difference, why they lost the majority of their points in, in that closing stage of the opening set. So they really need to remember how they were winning their points in the first and not just let, and not just let the Japanese give them cheap, easy points because it's yeah. not going to happen at this level. No. Two, 
one. I think with the slightly slower playing conditions, though, in comparison to uh, Birmingham at the Commonwealth Games, I think Terry he is struggling to put the shuttle away with the ease he did in Birmingham. That's a lovely shot. Yeah, and I think that he's getting a little bit frustrated in that in, in faster conditions would be outright winners from him uh, are just coming back. Yeah, definitely. But that's where he needs to use his shot variety to then set up a shorter lift where he can put, put it away almost on the first time. The Japanese have got amazing defence, both of them, so he can't expect uh, his matches to go through on the first time every time. No, I, I agree. He hit that shot out, but it was better. He was on a good length, so it was going to be hard for him to hit a smash winner. Whereas if he'd hit three, one, two or three two. drop shots first or a slice, then he might get a shorter lift and then he can go for that smash winner at the end. So the variety first, build the rally. Yes, definitely. Oh, that's a great shot from Canapo. Doubles is the only discipline where Japan has not won a World Championship gold medal. Gold in all other disciplines, men's and women's singles, women's doubles, men's doubles, but never in mixed doubles. Oh, there was real confusion there. Oh, that's brilliant. He found the space very well there after a bit of confusion. Yeah, especially as Three, he was off balance. Four. When he had played the smash. That's where, like you said at the start, he's such a skillful player, and it's about using that skill to create the gaps and, and find the gaps on the court. It's just gone a bit scrappy, hasn't it? Yeah, it was Six, quite a loose serve from four. Jessica Tan, that one. But as I was saying earlier, if you compare both of their movement compared to the first set where they were almost defending on the, the front service line for a lot of the time and putting so much pressure on the Japanese, they just don't seem to be doing that at the moment. And it's making the Japanese much more comfortable. Yeah, and I think that Matsutomo is... is uh, showing that confidence by going forward to the net more. Yeah, she's definitely dominating the net at the moment out of the two women on the court. Yeah. Oh, that's well taken. Seven, five, seven. Yeah, that's a very good shot. No backswing there, because if she did, then she would have hit it into the net because she would have been taking that lift, that taking the shuttle that little bit later, and she didn't have time to do that. Oh, look at that. Six, seven. Oh, that's one of those extraordinary shots from Terry Hill. That's demonstrating what you were talking about earlier, that it's not a problem if Matsutomo is at the back of the court and because she's got the strength and Kanako has got the confidence in her at the back, then he has the confidence to go forward for the kill. 
Where's the smash again? Down his forehand side. I'd like to see some statistics after this match. How many Seven, smash winners? Eight. Yeah. There was hit down that side. Well, I think that's at least five. Yeah. into the mid-court area, Eight. Terry Heat. Yeah, that's what they need to try and keep doing every point. They can't really have these lapses where they kind of come out of their tactics because that's where they're letting Kaneko and Matsutomo back into the game. Haven't had the best of years so far, it has to be said, the Japanese pair. A couple of quarterfinals, the All England and the Badminton Asia Championships, but apart from that, five first or second round losses. Yeah, now there's good attacking play. Backhand and then forehand side of Matsutomo. Nine. That's going wide. Ten, nine. Even though I don't think the Singapore pair are playing as well as they did in the first half, or for the most of the first set. They're managing to stay in this game very well. They're not letting the Japanese pair get too much confidence and run away with the match, which is really important. Very important. In fact, they have the advantage once again, as they did in the opening game at the mid-game interval. But here in the second, only a two-point advantage. They had a five-point advantage in the opening game, but still couldn't convert. Well, they can't take anything for granted with this kind of hope. And that's what I've seen them come from behind on several occasions. I'm sure you remember Jenny, the All England semi final last year against Champion Soon and Goni and Yin. They were again and 4 6 down. And they were in the final after that match finished. I mean, it was the most extraordinary comeback. You can never write off this Japanese pair. Never. Yeah, I think in the first set, actually, maybe 11 6 was a disadvantageous scoreline for the Singapore 11, because they might have relaxed a nine. bit too much, whereas now it's only 11 9. Nine. They might still be a bit on edge and they might think, okay, we have to stick to our tactics 100%. Whereas if you have bit too much of a scoreline, maybe your concentration goes. Mm. Yeah, it's well taken. 12, 9. That's oh. gone long of the back line. 14, 9. I'll make that 9 of the last 11 points. Weren't they 4 7 down? Something like that, yeah. yeah. Oh, this is a very, very good spell. The Singapore pair. 14, yeah, they just look like they're a bit more ready to work for their points now, especially in the in the flat and fast game. They're not trying to hit it too perfectly. Instead of hitting it one or two centimeters above the height of the net, they're now making le a few less errors on it, which is really yeah. important. A margin for error. Oh, that's gone wrong. Never came over the shuttle at all. Seven, four, 
14. Using the flick serve an awful lot. Do you think they lost confidence on their low serves? Or is it a, a specific tactic? I think it could be a tactic. I think at the end of the first set, they used the flick quite a lot against Terry He. And they had some good success from it. That's true. Yep. He was always getting it back, but they were often, because he often hits hard from the flick. And he's often off balance from it. He's therefore putting. Okay. Jessica Tan into a, quite a difficult position where she almost has to now cover the whole of the court because yeah. he's hitting it so off balance that he's removed from play for one, maybe even two shots if he's really off balance. So I think it has been a good tactic, but I think on that one he was just on it a bit too early. Oh! Wow. That's a fabulous final smash from Seven, Terry Heat. Ten. This is amazing. Are we going to see another comeback? Oh, 17-11 in the opening game. Ah! The Singapore pair had the advantage, but now they move on from 17. Oh, what a... What a complete change of momentum. This is extraordinary. Three points away from forcing a third and deciding game. Whoa. Oh, that's a brilliant flick serve. 19, 10. Judge changed their minds. It was the right shot. There was a big, big gap on the court there. But yeah, he just hit that a bit too hard. Third service error from Matsutomo. And that gives game point game opportunities point to Terry He and Jessica Tan to level this second round match at one game apiece. Game. One game all. Well, well, Second well. Game won by From four Lee seven Kai down and Tan Wei Han to winning Jessica. the game 21 11. One game and we four. will be treated to a third and deciding game. 35 minutes into the match. And it's one game all. So one game all Final in game. this excellent Love second all. round mixed doubles encounter. Play. 
At Commonwealth Games gold medalists, Terry He and Jessica Tan looked to be cruising the opening game when they were 17-11 up, but they ended up losing it to 19. And then the number 12 seeds, Kanako and Matsutomo, looked to be cruising or certainly in control in a game and 7-4 up. And somehow they just completely lost their way. 21 in the second game in favour of he and Tan. So, Jenny, what has the Japanese pair got to do here? I mean, obviously, a lot of it is psychological. They've got to get themselves together and forget that second game, as I was talking about earlier, easier said than done. But tactically, have, have they gone soft on the return of serves? What, what's happened to change this match? I think we were talking before, yeah, at the start of the second set, how much Matsutomo One, was dominating two. the net. And we've not seen her do that in the second half of the second set. It seems to have gone a bit, bit bashy. They've not really tried to challenge the net. I think that's going to be a key part of not just hitting everything hard, kind of like we're seeing them do now. They've got to try and play some soft shots, get, get her in like, like that. But she needs to try and really keep on the attack because the Singapore pair are doing really well to finish off the valleys when they're getting those opportunities. Yeah. And that was a fabulous punch clear from Terry Hill. Over the head of Matsutomo. And she was left stranded. Well, she was trying to be more positive on the return of serve. And I don't disagree with that sentiment. I think we're seeing a few more unforced errors from the Japanese coming in as well. I mean, when he's got a purple patch, uh, I mean, he's phenomenal. Yeah, I think the only thing Kaneko could have tried to do there was try somehow to lift it over Terry He's head. He was, Terry He was so close to that service line, putting so much pressure, that if he would have been able to get it over his head, then Terry He would have really struggled to get behind it. Probably would have really have only been able to clear it out. But this is exactly how they start the Singapore pair started in the first set it was they were putting so much pressure on the Japanese pair and it will be for them about trying to maintain that pressure now not, not give it away like like they unfortunately did in the first set yeah what a fantastic backhand from Terry he power he generates through technique and timing an example of what you talked about right at the start of the match. You said that to neutralise Terry He, you Seven. had to get the shuttle below tape height. And on that occasion, he had to take the shuttle very low. Very much more difficult to play an accurate shot. Yeah, and then Matsutomo was in and finished it off. Yeah. Mm, now that's an unforced Seven. error. Eight, two... And he wasn't under too much pressure there either. He could have just laid that off soft down the side of the court to then set up his his forehand rather than going for the winner on the first one. Nice, nice shot. He's played so many hard backhands from that position Two. that opponents have to wait back thinking he's going to play a hard shot, and that's when the drop shot becomes so effective. Yeah, that's very good skill from Terry He. Good awareness as well. Good no! 
which has made three service errors. Service over. Ten. Three. And yeah, it was very loose. And that's why I asked the question about them flicking so much, because I think Matsutomo has lost a bit of confidence on her low serve, and I think that's why she's she flicks so much. That's a nice shot, though. Yeah, I was just about to say, my answer before might not have been that, that, that correct for Matsutomo. She does look like she's lost a yeah. lot of confidence, and maybe yeah. the flicks now at this stage would be a better option, because they have been working as well. Yeah. The players will change ends, and it will be a seven-point advantage to the Commonwealth Games gold medalists, Terry He and Jessica Tan. 11-4, deciding game. And the seeded combination from Japan, Kanako and Matsutomo, are in big trouble here. Well, I know Jeremy Gang speaks to his players in English, but very difficult to hear what he's saying. Court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. Well, I have to say, I admire the character so far of Terry He because after losing that opening game, in the two-minute timeout between the first and the second game. He really looked disgusted with himself, didn't he? He looked very dispirited. But he's come out fighting. And he's, and he's played better and better. Maybe he that's where the advantage of having his wife on the court with him. She told him to <laughs> <laughs> get back with it. Is that what you would say? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> No, you don't have to answer that one. I'm only teasing. <laughs> oh, indecision. Oh. Yeah. Good. Smash again from Terry Heat. You know, if we, if we reach a 16-4 scoreline, I wonder how many other people will have flashbacks to that <laughs> All England semi final when they came back from 4 16 adrift. That's definitely something that they should be thinking about if it does get to that score line. Yeah, absolutely. You draw on, on past experiences. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> nice defence. Oh, challenge, yeah. Initially, the line judge indicated in, and then changed their minds and said it out. It's no wonder that we've got a first challenge. I think it's the first challenge with this mixed doubles. Challenge from the Singapore pair. Now, did it catch the line or not? Oh, no, it was way out. Judge made the correct decision challenge in the end. Unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Service over. That was a better rally from Five, the Japanese pair. They were 12. working hard going from defence into attack, Blake. defence into attack, and I don't think that's what they have to try and do now. They really have to make the Singapore pair work for their points, and they can't just keep defending because the Singapore pair are getting through. Nice drop. Oh, and again. Oh, missed opportunity. The hard work had been done. The drive defence gave them the opportunity. There's the drive defence from Matsutomo. Yeah, they did very well to get Terry He below the below the tape there, but. Yeah, just didn't capitalise. Both 
Barrichello really had to work hard in that rally. See the combination from Japan. Six, fourteen. Jessica Tan, straight 14, block and followed forward. Six. I've seen you play one or two of those in your matches too, Jenny. <laughs> it was a great move from Jessica Tan. I think it was a great block, but I think her movement forwards really put the pressure on Kaneko. He felt like he had to play the perfect net shot, otherwise it was going to get killed. Yeah, I can see what she was trying to do. Getting it. Trying to get it past Matsutomo Seven, at the front of the court, but she was alert Seven, to it. 14. Good take, good interception. This is, this is over yet, you know. I think I, I agree. I think there might be another twist in the tail. I don't think the Singapore pair look completely settled either. They'll be having that first set in their, in their minds that they can't relax now. Oh. Coach Limpexia also looks a little edgy on the edge of her seat. That was the flick. I'm sure we'll probably see another one here from Matsutomo. Yeah. At least it gets the rally started. But if opponents start waiting for the flick, yep, there it is again. And that's a super flick. Well, well, well. Don't you just love it? Sport at its best. Expect the unexpected. Yeah, and I've heard you say many times in the past, but you really can never give up on a game because you just don't know how it's going to... The momentum could change at any point. Exactly. You've got to be ready to capitalise on those chances, even if you think the game is... Definitely not in your favour of winning anymore. Uh, she got back well to that one. She was expecting the flick. 15, 10. This is an important rally, you know. From Terry, 16, he. Ten. Yeah, it was the perfect response, wasn't it? It's an amazing shot. Such good skill to be able to play that from so late. Oh. It was a good shot. He's really stepped into that one and put a lot of pace on it and forced Matsutomo to try and play it. But because there was so much pace on it, she almost had no time to react to it, force the mistake.
Where was the splash again? Down his forehand side of Kanako. And whilst he got it back, he was in a bit of a pickle. And that's definitely been exposed as a weakness in this match. So three points away from a place in the third round and beating the seeded combination. That's a nice return. Probably still. Seven further. 11, 18. now or never well, they have to make 18. their move 12-18 the number 12 seeds are down a little run of points right here could make their opponents uh, a little bit nervous oh it came off the frame below the height of the tape, height of the nets, and Terry Heat, as most players do, struggle when it's below tape height. 14, 18. It was very good work from the Japanese pairs at the start of the rally. Terry Heat was hitting some great lifts right into the corner and on, on a really good length, but they weren't, Kaneko wasn't tempted into trying to hit something crazy that was going to expose gaps on the court. He was just playing it in, playing it in, waiting until he could then capitalise. And that's what he did. He played it into the gap at, on that last shot. Nice backhand. Oh, that was great defence from Jessica Tan. Oh, oh now she's missed the easier one. He said 18 12 was now or never. Yeah. 14, two points. 18. In fact, they were 10, 18 down, weren't they? So four straight points. was the Seven hold four. and flick deep into the forehand corner 19, of the left-hander. That's the one that really did the damage. You're only seeing the final shot. But it was earlier than that that the rally was really won. Good return of serve. That looked tired movement to me from Terry Heath. I think he looked fully committed. I think he just wanted a net cord, so the rally was... He just won the point, it was at 20. <laughs> Singles movement, that one. Yeah. yeah. And a wry smile from Terry Heath. Nerves will be jangling with the Singapore pair. 16, 19. And they've gone very passive again. Terry. So is it going to be ready another quick serve? No. Play. I'm going to guess yes.
Oh, it's a flick serve is out. Way wide of the centre line. And that's a fourth service error. And it gives match point opportunities to Terry He and Jessica Tan. I think Terry He is beginning to struggle physically. One of the four match points 17. has been well saved. 20. Well, perhaps better that it's Kanako that's serving. Points down. Brilliant. And Terry He and Jessica Tan have caused an upset in the mixed doubles discipline. They embrace at the end of a thrilling encounter because they have beaten the number 12 seeds, Yuki Kanako and Mizaki Matsutomo of Japan. And the Commonwealth Games gold medalists go through to the third round. Disappointment etched on the faces of the Japanese players. But as I alluded to a little earlier, the Singapore pair, having been so far in front in the opening game, 17-11 and failing to convert, uh, to then come back and win the second game so decisively and now indeed win the third, shows enormous character. Exactly one hour for this thrilling match. The final rally, the change of pace, the angles, the interceptions, and the final drop shot from Terry He was played to perfection. And look at the delight for both of the Singapore players. Look at that. And sheer delight for Terry He and Jessica Tan. So they take leave of the court 19, 21, 21, 11, 21, 17 in the deciding game in an hour in one hour that match so as they leave i can thank jenny moore for her company and uh, like greg i invite you back again when you come back and visit us again yeah i've had a lot of fun thanks for having us on that's absolutely wonderful we will hold you to that you will come back again at some point but we look forward to our next match our last match of the day and it features the two-time former champion kento momota in the men's singles against Pranoy of India. <laughs>